Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes uh, actually by mail, and it came uh, directly, it was mailed to the ARRL. If you want to send a uh, letter, email, query, or something like that, send that to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, at P.O. Box 98. Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. That'll get to me quickly rather than having to go through the, the league. Uh, it's undated, so I don't know how long it was delayed, but probably not more than a day or two. This is a letter from Frank Sullivan, and I'll go over this in a minute. Uh, he asked me to compare two types of antennas, a quad and a hex beam. And uh, there are many differences between the quad and hex beam uh, that are um, not explored in this particular question, but we'll take a look at both. Let's look at some pictures because he asked me to compare two antennas, so I modeled them using Easy NEC uh, 6 Plus. By the way, Easy NEC uh, is available for free now. Uh, you can look for that on the web and uh, get that and use that uh, piece of software for modeling your own antennas and see what you can come up with there. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what we've got. This is a letter from Frank Sullivan, WP5ZMZ, and he says, here's a question. Uh, which antenna system, both mounted at 35 feet, it turns out that 35 feet becomes mildly problematic, um, for best forward gain. Now, there are many measures of antenna performance, best forward gain being one of them. And uh, would you advise and why? Uh, choices are a two element, four band uh, quad antenna with an eight foot boom. Eight foot's a little short, but uh, we'll take a look at it. Um, and then a two element, four band uh, hex beam, okay, like the MFG 1846. Uh, so let's take a look. Basically, we're going to look at the quad versus the hex beam, okay? Now, to do that, let's start with a dipole. This is a dipole right here. It's just a plain dipole in air. This shows the current distribution on the antenna and so on. And uh, if we look at the 3D pattern of this, it's weird. We get the parts going out the two lobes, but it also goes up. And remember that what goes up here saps uh, energy out of it. Uh, we are uh, working on this uh, at uh, f 15 meters, okay? Now, this is the horizontal. Notice that the because this is over real ground, the, it doesn't come in like this, like it does uh, in the idealized one shown in the textbooks. This is over real ground. Note that the gain down here, 7.5 dB over an isotropic antenna. And why is that? I'll tell you why that is. That is because this is reflected off of the ground here. So the ground gets into this and puts quite a bit of gain into a dipole that you would not normally find. Now, I know that the textbooks, both the general and extra class license manual, say that a dipole is 2.1 or 2.2 dB above a uh, isotropic radiator. That's true in, in uh, space where uh, there's no ground involved. The problem is, of course, there's no place on Earth you can do that. So you end up getting a, a bifurcated uh, vertical field like this one right here. Now this right here is the backyard dipole, and we put it up at the 35 feet. And notice how much happens up in here. You bifurcate the field because it's too high. Uh, for this dipole, okay? And I just wanted to show this effect right here. This is still your uh, maximum. You're at 7.5 uh, 
DBI at an elevation of uh, 20 uh, degrees. There's a lot of stuff that goes straight up, so this is working at an NVIS antenna at the same time. Okay, so there's the horizontal, there's the vertical. Now, let's go take a look. This is looking straight down on the top of the hex beam. The hex beam is made of um, these sort of cupped, like this, uh, elements for the driven element. And then from here to here to here to here is the director. Okay, it's an odd antenna shape, but it has proved very popular. Here is the uh, 3D pattern right here. So here we see the um, forward pattern on this. Note that 3 dB there, about 3 dB there. So you've got about 90 degrees. In fact, it says the beam width is 92.6 degrees. Okay, and that's at 3 dB down. Okay, now the gain over an isotropic is 889. But remember, when we looked at that dipole, we had a gain of 7.5. So what we're getting here is a little bit more gain, but not hugely more gain, although it does tend to direct the radiation. There's not much in the way of side lobes or back lobes uh, for these antennas. Here's what it looks like in elevation, elevation angle of 25 degrees, okay, for its max. Uh, there's not so much of a problem with the lobe here. We're at 14.175 at 35 feet. This lobe would grow if we went to uh, 15 meters. I know I did one at 15 meters and the other at 20, but the results correlate, okay? Here's our hex beam. The purple lines are the, the or magenta, it's magenta. Lines are the current distribution and so on. But he wanted eight feet between these two, okay? And um, uh, what did I do here? Okay, eight feet between the two. And this is what it looks like. Now, if we look at the, um, this is the uh, quad. We looked at the quad here. Here is the quad, more traditional antenna. It has a strong back lobe. Again, we're at 21 megahertz or 15 meters. We've got a back lobe, we've got small side lobes. And then it's actually got a narrower beam width, okay, and a narrower beam width. The beam width is 73.6. That translates directly into a higher gain. In this case, 12.44 uh, dBi. And here is the um, elevation pattern. Uh, we're up a little too high, so we're starting to develop another lobe up here. It's 10 dB down, so it's not sucking too much power. Right at the moment, we have a little bit of a back lobe and a forward gain of 12.44. Uh, this final chart shows uh, the gain. Uh, we remember that we get a little more gain out of the dipole than we might think we do because it's over real ground. The hex gain gives us a little more gain, uh, about uh, 1 and 1.4, um, 1.3 dB gain over this. And this gives... Um, about three and a half dB over that. You know, any of these are okay. The problem with the quad is you're not going to find much in the way of kits to put together. You have to build this yourself. It's a difficult antenna to put up and it is very easily destroyed by wind. Whereas my hex gain has withstood uh, over 50 mile an hour winds and come through just fine. Uh, dipole also works. Uh, pretty well. They're not dramatically different, but all things being equal, we'd pick the quad. But a lot of people pick the hex because uh, kits for that are readily available. So there you have it. All right, we took a look at the modeling on the different antennas. We found some differences. Uh, there was like maybe an S unit between the dipole and the quad not a huge amount of difference. In practice, uh, you'll find that your uh, quad gives you uh, best results, but 
they're very difficult to construct and they tend to have pretty flimsy construction. So, um, and I don't see, I went looking for commercial um, kits for uh, the, the quad loop, didn't see anything. Whereas the hex beam is readily available, relatively easy to construct. Um, Buddy Pole has made a portable version of this. I use the MFJ. There are lots of others available. The model that we used here was from the inventor of the hex beam. Okay, the quad model came uh, directly from the files of the Easy NEC, and um, I shortened the mass to eight uh, feet at uh, the request of uh, Frank here, uh, WB5ZMZ. Um, so there you have it. I mean, we took a good look at it. Now, I would like to point out we do a monthly drawing, so be sure to look for the ways to do that. Uh, also, um, I've got some charts following that show you the best way to get a hold of me um, and a few other things, as well as a list of our uh, patrons and uh, supporters. We thank you so much. So, until we next meet, 73.